Welcome to this uh, webinar topic on smart outreach sequences, the future of prospecting with Relia Dinic. A little bit about Relia. Um, Relia is the chief executive uh, officer at Skylead. Um, he began volunteering in a global organization called ISEC, uh, where managed, he managed to become the national vice president of organizational development. In the meantime, he was working for a done for the agency and uh, for lead generation. He found his passion for cold outreach. After finishing his ISAC experience, he found, uh, he found out about Skylead and joined him as an SDR and managed to move as, to the CEO position of the company in less than two years. Well done, Relia, and uh, hey, ISAC, once again. <laughs> hey, ISAC. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Okay, people. Hi, as you heard, uh, my name is Relia Danich. I'm the CEO at Skylead here. Um, just a small background on Skylead, like it started like uh, 2019 as a LinkedIn automation platform. And then we managed to move to some different parts of other things that I'm going to discuss here just to make it a lot easier for you guys to understand uh, this topic that I'm covering, because essentially we, we managed to pivot our tool in the way we were doing our outreach for our tool at the same time. So we developed a smart outreach methodology at that moment, I would call it like that. We developed a methodology where we uh, made, we wanted to create a multi-channel outreach. So combining mostly LinkedIn and email, that's what we uh, generally were doing. And uh, then we also wanted to combine something that we saw like, um, I would say a bottleneck uh, in the process. And something when we discussed with our agencies at that moment is, uh, um, the part where you need to create uh, to take some decisions as an SDR or as a salesperson, and at the same time, if a prospect is behaving in a, some different way that you're not expecting, and that's a very great big problem in automation. So we want we created a methodology where we wanted to include the decision or the behavior of the lead, and at the same time, we wanted to see how we can uh, again make it more personal, uh, try to personalize uh, personalize the approach as much as possible. Because at the same time, like we can automate a lot of things, but uh, when you see that it's it's not personalized, when you see that it's automated, it can give a bad bad feedback from the lead and just um, not move with that lead on the next level. And that's what we call the smart outreach methodology. And that's what we were doing at Skylead as SDRs when I was an SDR. And the biggest problem was like we implemented like emails into our uh, into our platform. And we just didn't know how we could maybe use them. And that's something that was a big uh, like pain point for us as a, as a salespeople. But at the same time, we were talking, as I said, at that moment with the agencies, the white labels of our solutions, what they would like to see uh, inside of Skylead. And uh, what came to our mind or what we did before developing uh, Skylead uh, in, in this smart outreach sequences, we just, of course, automated everything and we did through Zapier. I, I hope everyone is familiar with Zapier, but essentially it, it allows you to combine multiple solutions, push the data from one solution to another and automate everything just to make it a lot easier, just not to have it uh, to, for you to do it manually or through virtual assistants or through team members, however you want to do it. So. What we did was essentially combine our solution with uh, Lemlist at that moment, or uh, and we also used like, like Reply.io, and we combined everything. But what we saw as a pain point and what we saw with, again, with our agencies is that it's, uh, for that to work, you need to have a lot of uh, developing, I would say, background, or you need to understand how to use Zapier and how to connect everything. And at the same time, uh, the cost of everything because paying for for uh, for another email automation tool, paying for Zapier, paying for additional uh, tasks inside of Zapier and et cetera, the cost is just ramping up. And the, the other pain point as for us mostly is because we needed to onboard new salespeople to learn everything like this, just to understand how it works and to show them on different platforms. And you can just imagine like, from your own experience when you're learning a new platform it's very like uh, it can get a little bit rough to understand it how to use it etc and that's where we came up with smart outreach sequences or smart sequences as we call it the inside of skyly the year and a half ago i think something like that and even more i think it's now maybe two years 
like where we implemented uh, LinkedIn, email uh, outreach, uh, email uh, and verification discovery, and imaging gear personalization inside of a one tool where we essentially cut off the middle middle guy Zapier and at the same time not using other solutions. And through that, I just wanted to show you like, uh, it looks like something like this, where we combined also those conditions that I talked about, those de decisions and behaviors. So we thought, how can we uh, uh, split the sequence depending on the, uh, uh, on the lead's behavior? Because each lead behaves on a different way. And at the same time, automate as much as possible. Because um, if we automate everything that we can, we essentially can save a lot of time on having those meetings and just leaving the outreach to, to do all, all on its own. Of course, still it's not possible to automate everything, but I think we're moving in, in a lot as, as an industry to do those things and uh, look as more human-like uh, possible. And that's what we were looking at Skylight at that moment. And that's what we implemented. And we implemented different conditions which help us uh, split the sequence. So for you to not create, let's say five sequences, you can ever create everything inside of one sequence and follow everything inside of that. And that was the methodology that we created into um, automation. And I just wanted to like, uh, the point is that I wanted to show you some of the insights, tips and tricks like that we saw through, through this uh, behavior, through these sequences, through our user base, through our agencies and white labels and through, uh, through some of the tips and tricks that we also uh, used. Uh, inside of inside of Skylight. Of course, you can do this all manually. Again, it's up to you if you want to automate and everything. And I think there is a spot when, when sometimes uh, you want to do things manually. Uh, as I said, unfortunately, a lot of things cannot be automated and there is still that uh, authenticity uh, or personalization that you, you can uh, use and it can give you a better result. But it's up to you and depends again on, on your industry. And all of the tips and tricks and insights that I'll, I'll share with you here, my biggest advice is again, because when, when we were scouring and uh, checking out uh, sequences of our users from our side, like we see some things that don't work for us, but they work for our client. So I would say again, whatever you hear here, and I would say on generally on this summit, is you need to focus uh, on yourself, test it out, see how it works, and then just make a decision on your own if, if it's worth pursuing or if it's worth doing it. So uh, first thing I'm gonna talk about is, uh, we're gonna talk about uh, some probably uh, stuff that you may be heard, but I just want to cover the people that didn't maybe heard their, their first SDR, just, just starting out, and some of the pain points that we like uh, saw and wanted to just clear, clear out the air for them. I'm going to first start with emails because all of this started essentially from emails where we implemented that and we were not sure how to use it as, an, as, as a sales team inside of Skylead. And something through uh, extensive like research and extensive uh, sequencing that we created that again through, through our agencies is for, for emails, what we found useful and what we found to work is generally if you're promoting a LinkedIn event, which is a awesome thing that you can do on LinkedIn if you have that uh, resource, email is very good for that. It, it's very direct. It's not selling uh, the user, the, the lead anything. It's giving them free value, essentially, if it's a free LinkedIn event, which I, I'm assuming it is. But promoting the LinkedIn event through email is a very good idea because it pops up immediately. It shows to the person, hey, this is a free free thing that we offer. Do you want to join? It's For you, it's only to sign up. That's the one thing. But I know that depending if you're doing sales, that doesn't give, provide you any additional value. As for the sales part, something that uh, extensively showing a good data for us is like always to use email as a last resort in cold outreach. So essentially, let's say uh, I send the invite to connect. They don't accept my invite to connect. I try to find their email. I can't find their email or I find their email and send emails, but they're not answering. My last resort would be to send them an email message. So because I tried connecting on LinkedIn, I tried email multiple times, I should maybe try now email. And what we saw was uh, 
that a lot of uh, people like reply on emails at, at that moment because they saw before like you tried to connect with them some kind of emails you you sent it's always good to have a reply in 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 my mind so even if it's a negative one you can you will you will receive it on email and again it's not just negative it's positive we saw a lot of closing from this part they just didn't like they might they're maybe not using that much email or maybe they didn't saw your connection they ignored it at the first time email is a very good thing uh, to use as a last resort in cold outreach that's what's extensively shown to through 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 our sales team and at the same time what we saw through through our clients um, you get like paid emails and free emails use everything you got like don't don't like uh, try to to save it up you have each month like credits around 800 depending on the subscription like 800 free emails and uh, 50 prepaid emails that you can get back if the lead responds so those are the, the ways that we saw like uh, email being active and uh, being good you can use email directly if you're a recruiter but i don't want to cover here that's that's a good good thing also connection request this is something that always like our users are trying to see how they can boost their acceptance rate because linkedin is a very good um platform for building relationships it's not good to immediately sell it's good to build a relationship and then softly sell as we like to to talk about and say in sales industry but what we saw as uh, uh, a testing like i uh, we did a testing last year we did this year, this year like sending generic like uh, connections like like this ones is the the worst thing that you, you can do your acceptance rate will fall down and it will not be good uh but as for the blank and personalized there's always the debate like hey should i send a blank or a personalized uh, personally here uh in skyway i would say for us personalized the uh, uh, connections are working much better than blank ones but at the same time we have agencies that blank that they use blank connections that are providing also value to them. They are managing to connect with them and to, to, to close deals through, through this kind of outreach. Uh, just as I said, the negative part is just don't try to send generic ones. You can try to personalize a little bit more and use like a, a joke, like a joke on connection requests. It boosts your acceptance rate, a cringy joke, even though it's a cringe joke, uh, people will just, just connect with you and they will like, oh, that's very, very funny and et cetera. So that's something that we saw from, from the connection request. The second thing is uh, what, whatever you do, do, do not try to pitch on the connection request uh, because again, slap pitching as they call it is something that will just immediately decline you, even block you or tell, the, tell, tell LinkedIn like, I don't want to receive anything from this person, which is something you don't want to um, have from LinkedIn. Uh, but there is another way that we saw, like, again, from this is from the sales team that we tested out and saw like a good, good results uh, is we tried to combine a connection request with uh, email, essentially. So we tried to redi redirect it, essentially. So let's say, for example, the, the oh, sorry, let's say, for example, the connection request on the right like what we did here is like hey uh, first name i just sent you a really personalized email but i'm not sure if you're more a fan, more a fan of uh, email or linkedin so i want to drop your note here to to if you find it more convenient so this is a very good thing because people then uh, uh, check out your email they answer there or they accept your connections uh, connection on linkedin and immediately uh, come up on the on the conversation there so that's something that uh, is also good to test out, see how it works for us. It managed to, to book a lot of demos to, we, we are still using it in some sequences. Third, th third thing is to, something that we saw is to use, generally when you see a multi-channel outreach sequence, is generally what we saw is good to use the connection request as a first, second, or a third touch point inside of the sequence. That's the general part what we saw. It's always good even when we're talking about LinkedIn just to have some kind of touch point on LinkedIn and then try emailing the person. So let's say my first step is an email and my second is a view profile maybe. That's also good. So generally it's good to just have those light touch points and uh, light pushes because it shows the person you're like there. It just gave better results. That's why combining like LinkedIn and email is very good. Uh, 
So yeah, you can use it as you saw maybe a, a first uh, step as an email and then send them an invite to connect the one I showed you maybe, or you can first try to connect with them and then send them, send them an email if it makes sense for you. View follow, this is something that people uh, sometimes forget. It's a light push essentially, because on LinkedIn you get a notification, hey, uh, Relia just viewed your profile. Or if they have a premium LinkedIn or sales navigator or whatever, they can check out who viewed their profile and then just see who you are. So that's a good light touch touch point. You can use it in the in between messages and etc. So whatever like you want to use it like what what we what what sometimes is good to do is like create an invite to connect, check out if they're connected with you after three days. If they're not not connected, you view their profile again, and then again you check out if you're connected with them and just message them so that's the that's the idea how you can use like those light push light pushes light touch points to to boost your acceptance rate response rate it's very good to use so don't undermine them uh, messages on linkedin again the same goes as connection so you connect with the person just don't immediately like send after four hours like hey i got an awesome solution for you let's uh, have a call to boost your sales etc etc uh, on LinkedIn, especially like in 2021, I would say that's also one of the reasons why we invented smart smart sequences is that you need to be a little bit lighter on LinkedIn and try to uh, generally like try to uh, create a softer pitch or build a relationship as people want to see. So soft pitches, like uh, give them a hint, don't immediately like tell them like, uh, like I would say here, Skylight is a, is a LinkedIn automation and email uh, software tool that can combine everything into a one smart sequence, blah, blah, blah. Don't do that. Try to be uh, uh, a little bit more genuine, try to ask questions or uh, just give them a hint of what you may, 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 may have to offer here. So, and like try to send them a message after two or three days, that's, Totally fine. That's what we saw again from our side and from the same side of users. Something that we're currently testing, I can tell you is, we want to see if we can connect with the person, let's say we connect with them and after seven or 14 days, we we send them a message. Uh, that's what, what we are currently testing out to see how it works because um, again, I heard subjective like thoughts from, from some of our agencies that uh, they want to test it out. So we want to test it out also. Uh, also, image and GIF on LinkedIn are not that because I uh, I hear a lot of times like because people uh, who know about this stuff they say that it's that but people who don't don't know about image and GIF personalization uh, on on a mass scale is something that I can assure you is not that and you should of, of course try to implement inside of it because again your acceptance and response rate except especially your response rate will boost like it's abnormal because uh, again depends on the gif and image but what we use again here at skyly then what we saw again in some some agencies we try to put it on a funnier side something to to connect with them and just to show them like these are some of the examples like where we had positive responses and i it doesn't matter if they they don't know what i'm talking about they respond and they, they want to talk so i can immediately now continue a conversation, as I said, building relationship on LinkedIn. Okay, email. Something again that we saw is that you need to have at least three threads with free uh, emails. So it's nine emails or more. So you send the first email, like, I don't know, subject line, sky lead and company example. Uh, hey, I have this, blah, blah, blah and then two follow-ups inside of that email. So that's three emails inside of one thread. And when we, when we, uh, if they don't respond, we move to another, another thread. So that's something that we saw uh, again through, through our user base and through Skylead is that people generally, uh, th this is the best, best option that we show, saw uh, for response rate, for, for, for booking a demo or a meeting is you just need to have like three threads uh, at least inside of your sequence. Uh, break the pattern, combine LinkedIn touch points. As I said, I already mentioned like view profile, even a message inside of emails. When you go multi-channel, you're giving them more ways to see you, especially if your target is like a CEO, head of sales, especially in big companies. Just, I can tell you from my, my perspective, I'm getting like uh, 30 to 50 connections per day. 
like uh, 10, 10 emails per day. I get uh, like uh, 10 to 20 emails. Like I'm getting a lot, a lot of e uh, my inbox is full. So you need to stand out and you need to use every channel that you can in cold outreach. Even cold calling, I cannot talk uh, that much about that. I'm, I'm not an expert in that part. But cold calling is also something that we have a couple of white labels that are using and they are having, I know that in USA, it's very good for USA people, depending on the country and et cetera. But you need to see what you can use as, as, as a touch point and as a channel in, in your outreach. Email opens um, we, for conditions. So what you can do is you can split an audience if you can track. So depending on the tool, like some tools can track it. I mean, I think most all of the tools can track an open, open of a person. So what is a great strategy uh, that uh, one of the agencies that combines a, a little bit of marketing and sales, this is where if you have a marketing team, if you have blogs, uh, lead magnets, this is a good way to combine uh, your your outreach with the marketing team is to split the flow. So essentially, you can imagine like you have a flow where it can check where you check like, hey, did this this person open an email? And depending on the subject line, so your first email could be something like, hey, I'm here to sell you something. And if they didn't open that email, then those people probably uh, are not the type of people that will open sales emails. So you need to maybe split them and give them more of a marketing email where you can uh, uh, hand them free stuff. So a uh, subject line with, with like, hey, a uh, subject line, free ebook for you or something like that. I don't know. Uh, depends depends what you what you can offer so you split them into into two sequences as you can see in the, in the image let's for example i have one where i see that people are opening my sales emails like i'm i'm selling them more i i should send to those people more uh, sales emails but if they're not opening my emails i should maybe pro uh, try to give them free stuff and they they can then maybe get a little bit warmer also another strategy is like if they're not opening your emails after a couple of times, let's connect on LinkedIn, maybe. Let's try to do that. Um, oh, and uh, yeah, so this this is the part. Again, you can use this uh, as a bump bump connection request. As I said, uh, you should not directly pitch in, inside of a connection request. This is one of the ways that you can maybe test out, see how it works, because essentially this is some kind of a pitch, but it's not a direct like, hey, I can book you 50 meetings per, per month. Uh, let's connect. Uh, it's more like a uh, uh, very human-like uh, e uh, connection. I sent you a couple of emails. I just wanted to check out if you if I haven't crossed the line uh, or if I approached the wrong person. Let me know uh, if that is the case. Have an awesome day. And you would be amused how many people are like, "Hey, I just didn't see your emails. Thanks, thanks for letting me know. I'm just I'm right. I'm gonna check it out now." And you get a very good response here and a good acceptance rate, or they respond to the email. And yeah, you can test out uh, something like that. It's very good. Okay, uh, yeah, uh, we'll the presentation here a little bit for the animation, but okay, uh, email links also. So if you have links inside of the inside of your email, that's a very good uh, uh, that's a good thing to do. But you should watch out for for deliverability. Links can decrease your deliverability on email. Uh, what I can uh, tell you is to not include them in the first email for sure, because if the first email lands in the inbox, you have a lot higher chance to, to uh, act after that land in the inbox. Uh, so if you insert a link in the first email and you land in, the sp in spam, you're in a big problem. So try to not use links in the first email. There's no, no reason for that. Just avoid it. But what you can do is insert links. As I said, just one link per, per email is enough. Don't try to overlink it because of the deliverability. And at the same time, the person will just will not know where to click. You're giving them multiple call to actions. Uh, and why, as I said, you can see the picture, but use links with pixels to grab their data and use ads. This is a great addition if you have a marketing team. This is something that we do do in Skylead again, and in another agency which combines marketing channels with with Skylead. Is what we what we do is we create a landing page, or we have an ebook, and if they come to that uh, link. We have pixels that collect the, the, their data and we uh, launch also ads on their other platforms. So again, we're using a more sophisticated multi-channel outreach. We're using two different channels now. We're using marketing and sales 
and we're getting uh, getting them to see Skylead all, all over the place or your agency. Uh, and we can even personalize because they visited that page and we can just push uh, the 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 message of, of of the lead magnet that we provided through that landing page, um, and the same as an open open uh, parameter that we saw before. You can split the audience again, like uh, as we talked, like the people who are pro, uh, who are more engaged to clicking on links and who are not more engaged on clicking on links. Um, and then you can maybe again try to send them if they didn't click on on LinkedIn. You can try to send them on on email. You can try to send them on a link on LinkedIn the email. Number of touch points. Uh, so a lot of people like how many touch points should I have? What should I do? Uh, I have three examples here. Uh, the first one is the the one like uh, the most that we have the data on that we saw. It's like in period of twenty to 20, 21 days to twenty eight days should be around 14 to 20 touch points, including email, invite to connect, message, view profile. We're, we're, we're saying all of that are touch points in some cases, in, in some way. So it could it should have around that, that part. Um, and you should combine everything essentially. In period of 30 to 90 days, we have some users that are trying to be create, uh, like when we first launched Smart Sequences, I created my first sequence with like around 70 steps. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's it's a lot of work, but uh, it can work for, for some people. For us in Skylead, it didn't work, but we have agencies that are doing it. Um, and they are doing like, as I said, in the period of 30 to 90 days, they are inserting like 50 touch points inside of, inside of the sequences. Like they're splitting, doing a lot of things. It's very advanced, but at the same time, you're automating more stuff where you don't need to think about them and you can combine them. And we have one agency that I wanted to talk about where they, they where they have a sequence that lasts a year and they have around, I think, 100, uh, 100 touch points and uh, it's working for them. I don't know <laughs> what, how, and whatever, but uh, like we, we in Skylight, we want to try it out, but that's something that we saw and they're like very, how do I say, they're very satisfied how it's working. That's a lot of automation. That's a lot of things that you can do. But again, um, the the topic that you were covering was the smart outreach sequences. The, the first question was that at what stage people should start stop with the automation and move to the non automated cells. Um, that's what, on the other uh, part that I wanted to. So how how we generally do it and how again our our users do it. We have sequences. Uh, that are automated and sequences that are also automated, but we we uh, create a CSV file and import every variable for those. So what I would say is just split the audience. You have you have targets that you can generally automate fully, launch that, have that run in the background, and focus on those more personalized. I know that when you're selling enterprise, that's a really good way like to target maybe their team members, ask them questions about the about what problems are they having inside of their team and when you gather the information you push you push the information in the personalized sequence so uh, yeah that's something how we generally uh, do it and how we 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 think about it nice um, there are a few more questions Relia, but unfortunately we we don't have the the time to to go over them yeah. um you just, can guys approach me on LinkedIn. Ask me if I, if you didn't manage to uh, we didn't manage to answer. So no worries. You can find me on LinkedIn, and I'll ha be happy to answer you guys. 